Hey there, friends. I often make comments that I seriously believe and very truthful about, about wackos on the far left, the gun control movement, and certain politicians are actually glad when children die. Not only is it an awesome fundraiser for them, they make a ton of money. They are in the business for making a ton of money off of dead children. But it also allows them to tug at some of the emotional heartstrings out there and get people to print signs, wave signs, buy new t-shirts based on strictly emotion. There's reasons why the government moves slow. It's because a government that moves too fast can make decisions based on emotion. That's why anytime there's a school shooting or something like that, you never want our politicians to implement any kind of a law or pass any kind of a law quickly because it's strictly based on emotion. We saw that with Uvalde last year. Some of these clowns and cowards last year would not have voted for this same gun control bill, bill last year that they voted for had it not been on the heels of Uvalde. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you feel like if a child brings a gun to a school, they should be expelled? I'm not talking about a Pop-Tart that's shaped like a, a gun. I'm not talking about a cap gun. I'm not talking about a ray gun. I'm not talking about a water gun. I'm talking about an actual fully functioning firearm that could kill people. Do you favor a child bringing one of those to school and being ex expelled indefinitely? Well, apparently some people don't. The Albuquerque public school system decided to implement a new handbook here recently. In the handbook, instead of listing permanent expulsion hearing under the consequences for students who have brought a firearm on school grounds, as the earlier proposal did, the final draft published on the APES website softens that language, saying such students will face an expulsion hearing with mandatory expulsion of a period of not less than one year. Now, this God's gift to women here, Superintendent Scott Elder, seems to be the center of the softness, if you know what I mean. In addition to permanent expulsion being a tough pill to swallow for educators, he pointed out that sometimes students make mistakes, saying there have been cases when students have a gun in their car, like for hunting trips. Forget it there. Then come to school with it, and that permanent expulsion makes a blanket statement for all the students, regardless of their age. That's where these people prove their ignorance and stupidity. How stupid is that? You're telling me now if they have a gun for hunting. You can't sit here and tell me that you can't have a hearing to determine if that gun was brought there for hunting or not. Part of the problem is this one-size-fits-all thing. Now, they're trying to say that that's the problem, having a one-size-fits-all, that that's why they need to only expel for one year, not indefinitely. The one-size-fits-all thing is a problem. You need to have a committee. You need to have a panel of people. If you need to, then since these people are not being, quote, tried as adults, why can't you have a panel of people within the school? Some being students, some being administrators, some being teachers. Why can't you put together a panel at these schools to determine if little Billy, who had a camouflage outfit, some duck hunting shells, um, dove hunting shells, and a 12-gauge shotgun with the appropriate choke, those things in his vehicle, somebody saw it, now what do you do with him? My thinking is this panel, and again, it's a great panel if you include students, administrators, and teachers in this panel. Maybe even throw a couple of parents in there. I wouldn't be opposed to that either. But do these things in order to not use a one-size-fits-all thing. You know what the one-size-fits-all thing gets us? You know how we have the zero tolerance policy? That's where we, we have a huge problem with this stupid one size fits all thing. The schools are stupid enough to implement these types of rules. You have a person who's being bullied. The bullied person gets expelled along with the bully when they punch them in the throat. Should that happen? No, it should not happen. If the bully has gone to a teacher and somebody, administrators, whomever, and said, this person's picking on me and nobody does anything about it, document it. I want you to document it right now. Because if this person has to throat punch that bully, I want it to be on record. That's how it should be. But they don't do that. Whenever they have this one-size-fits-all, zero-tolerance policy, the bullies have their way. Because they can bully without being seen. A bully doesn't always mean a fight. You can bully somebody by saying things, plucking them in the back of the head, doing silly things at school, and bully that person, and nobody will ever know better. No one will ever know better because nothing ever escalates. The bully always gets away with it, and the kid who's bullied goes away with some kind of mental trauma or whatever. If we allow these kids who are bullied to punch these bullies in the face, that would stop a lot. But no, we can't have that. 
because one size fits all works here, but it can't work in other areas. There should be an opportunity to look at every single situation out there diplomatically. What are you telling these children whenever you say one size fits all all the time? You're telling them that it doesn't matter what your side of the story is. It should matter what their side of the story is. And in this case, if a kid brings a gun to a school, I think that we could have panels put together to determine if this kid needs expulsion or not. But if you don't have those panels in place, what you're telling me is you are loosening up the controls now. You are loosening them up. Instead of having your silly little one-size-fits-all that goes towards kids who are bringing a gun to school, you're including those kids who are hunting. I think loosening up these controls without a check and balance system in place is a bad idea. I know it sounds like I'm taking both sides. I'm not. If there were a check and balance system in place, then I would say you should not have a permanent expulsion out there. But since they don't have that check and balance system and they're not willing to implement one, there has to be strong reasons why children should be scared to bring guns to school. It can't be a, oh, he had a bad day. Little Billy didn't mean anything by that. No, it doesn't matter. If you're not willing to set something up that can be indiscriminate and look at every single person and every single situation, weigh them out, I mean, if nothing else, you can educate children on the court system by having this panel. Because you can show them how the court system works, how you present evidence and things like that. But if you don't have that in place, you should have a very, very strict regimen that keeps these children from having guns in schools. If you notice, none of the anti-gun people are coming out mad about this. None of them. None of them are mad about this. Shouldn't they be outraged? Shouldn't politicians be outraged? They should be severely outraged. I should see red shirts from the Every Town with Crazy Moms all over this school right here, pick, picketing out front, saying that you just loosened up all these rules for kids to be able to bring guns to school and only be expelled for one year. But nobody's mad about it because they don't care. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Let's go,